it's called Justice League Dark, but um, obviously we know these characters. There's there's much more to them just than just being dark. What, like, what tone were you shooting for with this? Kind of, we're going for an occult action movie. Like, uh, instead of guns, it was magic and you know spells and and uh, energy blasts and all that stuff. But um, the tone and the uh, pace and the um, energy behind it was rapid fire. Um, kind of like a buddy movie or a, even a um, Dirty Dozen or Magnificent Seven only with magic. So that that's kind of the idea that inspired it and, and, the, and the tone that informed what we were doing with Constantine in the lead. Well, how did you decide which members, and there's so, so many supernatural characters you could have chosen from, how did you settle on who you did? Well, we needed characters who were kind of at a crossroads in their lives so that the story brings them together for a reason. And so characters like the Spectre were too powerful and don't really need to be with anyone else. But characters like Dead Man who's, you know, searching for his, his killer and Zatanna who's got issues with controlling her powers or, or, or reconciling her magic with all the forces of evil that are out there and you know, Constantine is a loner, and he's kind of brought into the story against his will a little bit. Um, and so there's all these different backstories to the characters that have to be resolved in the through doing the through the course of the story. So, can you just break down the plot for the, for us, like broad stroke um, strokes? Well, broad strokes. Um, bad occult stuff has been happening uh, throughout the world. Um, Dead man because he's he's into he's on the well I want to say the uh, he's he's basically the uh, on the highway between the unnatural and supernatural and the real world and so he senses this stuff so he goes about trying to pull a team together to help face it but because he's dead man he can only manifest himself through other people's bodies. So he's got to manipulate people in order to get them together. And that kind of gets the story started. And there's a mystery about who's really behind the whole thing. Um, and again, it's about the plot itself isn't as important as the, the camaraderie between the team and how they help each other overcome their issues and things. I mean, it's much more interesting than that, but <laughs> it's not that touchy-feely. But um, <laughs> Can you talk about the decision to include Batman with this group? Um, well, to me, Batman is the non-believer. He's also the most human of, of all the characters. Um, he represents the audience's sense of, of disbelief. And he's got to be made to believe. And so he's there. And, you know, you never heard to have Batman. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know. Is, is, you know, he's, he's, he's a spice, so, um, but I mean, I, I promise the fans he does not dominate the movie in any way. If anything, it's, it, he's kind of overwhelmed by everything that's going on. So it, it's, he's actually more of a, a humorous uh, running commentary to the proceedings. I, I, I like the idea of Batman re, um, you know, re, re, reacting to this different world, actually. So. Uh, as far as Constantine goes, did you always kind of have Matt in, in mind to come in and voice him? Yeah, he was, you know, definitely, a, of course, he was our our main desire to have. I mean, we didn't know he'd, he'd want to do it or be willing or whatever, or be available, and thank God he was. And um, it made the whole proceeding so much easier because he was part of it. It kind of gave it a, a sense of uh, credibility. You know I mean? We didn't have to worry about... That was one less character we had to worry about getting right, <laughs> yeah, sure. because he knew the character inside and out. He made the dialogue sound like his character. Uh, yeah. he, he he brought a lot to it. He is Constantine, right? Constantine. I mean, you know, for whatever happened to the show is one thing, but I, for I think fandom, he will always be Constantine, no matter what happens in the future. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, but since this is a straight-to-video film, you, you have a little more leeway in terms of what you can portray. And you guys have released R-rated films. Uh, um, with this one, since it is Justice League Dark, how did you like? How far was too far? Did you like find a point where maybe you, you were doing? You felt like we need to pull back a little bit. 
Um, I try not to go into these thinking that way, and consequently, I've had two movies that got R's that I had to recut. <laughs> so <laughs> this wasn't one of them, but um, you know, we just try to do what feels organic to the story and feels real, and worry about you know the ratings people decide whether it cuts makes the cut or not. So okay. What are your thoughts on uh, on a sequel to this? I mean, you guys are always releasing different types of animated films, but uh, to do a part two is that, is that like something that makes sense? Oh, totally. I mean, I would want to do that, and I'd want to have a almost totally different team, and you know, not not necessarily guaranteed Batman's going to be on it, or you know, bring in characters we didn't have in this. Maybe use some who were in it just to jumpstart. I I do think Constantine would be the constant. Right. Um, but yeah, that the whole point of doing it was to hopefully jumpstart a new franchise. Yeah.